Please stand. Jesus referred to himself as the resurrection and the life, and that whoever places their confidence, their trust in him has life. The Apostle Paul said, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. The hymns are listed for you on your worship folder. We'll use the opening hymn, hymn 451, Precious Lord, Take My Hand. We'll begin this Christian funeral service for Bernard Prawley in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have come together to seek God's comfort in our sorrow and to rejoice in the promise of the resurrection. Grace and peace to you. From God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ who said, 
Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. We pray. Lord Jesus, you wept at the grave of your friend Lazarus, and you consoled Mary and Martha in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Bernard Prawley, and dry the tears of all who weep. Calm our troubled hearts, dispel our doubts and fears, and lead us to praise you for having brought him to faith. In your rising from the dead, you conquered death and opened the gates to eternal life. Strengthen us with your word and lead us through this earthly life until at last we are united with you and all the saints in glory everlasting. Amen. You may make reference to the scripture readings that are in your worship folder. Jolene said, search the scriptures and find any kind of scripture that makes reference to cattle or farming. <laughs> so here are some of those references. Psalm 1 talks about being planted by the streams and waters of life, which certainly applies to Bernard and to his life, the waters of life being Jesus himself. We read in Psalm 1. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Not so the wicked, they are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. We're going to now read from Psalm 50. This is God talking. And the fact that he owns everything, which is something that Bernard knew. He did all, Bernard did all to Christ's glory. I have no need of a bull from your stall or goats from your pens, for every animal of the forest is mine, and the cattle on a thousand hills. I know every bird in the mountains and the insects in the fields are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world is mine and all that is in it. Do I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Sacrifice thank offerings to God and fulfill your vows to the Most High. And here's a very familiar verse. And call on me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you will honor me. And finally we read from 2 Timothy chapter 2. Where the Apostle Paul says this. Join with me in suffering like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. For no one serving as a soldier gets entangled in civilian affairs, but rather tries to please his commanding officer. Similarly, anyone who competes as an athlete does not receive the victor's crown except by competing according to the rules. Now listen to this part. The hardworking farmer should be the first to receive a share of the crops. Reflect on what I am saying, for the Lord will give you insight into all this.
We'll read now the life history that's contained in your worship folder. Bernard Lewis Prawley was born in Onalaska, Wisconsin on May 3rd, 1920 to Harry and Carolyn Borkerding Prawley. He was baptized into the Christian faith at St. Paul's Evangelical Lutheran Church in Onalaska on June 6, 1920. He later was confirmed there by Pastor and Reverend Walter Paustian on May 20th, 1934. Bernard was united in marriage to Mary Walter June 3rd, 1947 at St. Paul's. And their marriage was blessed with two daughters, Jolene and Janelle. During his lifetime, he enjoyed dairy farming with his registered Guernseys and served on many state and national boards. His greatest joys were the many Guernsey friends he met during those 42 years. Bernard attended many World Cattle Expo shows. He served on the Onalaska School Board and the Foundation Board at La Crosse's Western Technical College. Bernard Lewis Prawley was called home to be with his Savior. Monday, March 12, 2018, at the age of 97 years, 10 months, and 9 days. He has now been reunited with his parents, wife Mary, brothers Theodore, Rudy, wife Irene, and Lester, wife Beverly, brother-in-law Wilford, wife Edith Walter, infant a grandson Joel Stratman and son-in-law Kenneth Stratman. Bernard parts for a little while from his daughters Jolene Stratman of Onalaska and Janelle, husband Jacob Lady of Spokane, Washington. Grandchildren Jessica, husband Chris Rohde, Amanda, husband Jay Christie, Kurt, wife Janae Stratman, Gretchen, husband David Kramer, Kristen, husband Patrick Courtright, Emily, husband Joe Klibowitz, Erica, husband Tim Biesterfeld, and Melanie Lati, seven great grandchildren and one step-great-granddaughter. The Apostle Paul said to Timothy, I have fought the fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. We'll continue by singing hymn 54, where shepherds lately knelt, hymn 54.
say I would be there Filled with Words for our comfort this afternoon are printed in your worship folder, selected by the family. It's from Luke chapter 2, verses 29 to 32, which reads as follows. Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and the glory of your people, Israel. O Holy Spirit, we ask for your indwelling this afternoon, and know that we have it. As we look back on these words, we know that you, they are your words of life to Bernard and for us. Amen. In the name of Jesus, dear Janelle, Jolene, and all of your family, it's not surprising to you to hear me say, Bernard Prawley was ready for heaven. So to us, 97 years seems like a long, long time. To God, it's a blink of an eye. He was ready for heaven. What exactly do we mean by that? Bernard knew what he meant by that. You know. Maybe everybody else here knows too. What do you mean by that? That Bernard was ready for heaven. Well, Simeon, who first spoke these words that I just read to you and then are printed for you, was ready for heaven. Simeon is ready for heaven because somehow God had nudged him and said to him, Hey, Simeon. Today is the day. Jesus Christ and his mom and dad, Mary and Joseph, are going to walk through these doors. There they are. They're in the temple. They were there 40 days after the birth of Jesus, the Bible says, to do two things. Do the rite of purification for Mary, and every firstborn son had to be redeemed or bought back and that was reminiscent of how God had delivered Israel many centuries before during the Passover. So there they were. Boom. God the Holy Spirit says to Simeon, they're here. Don't miss this moment. Jesus is it. And they walk up. He walks up and Simeon holds the child Jesus and he speaks these words that I just read to you. Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace, for my eyes have seen your salvation which you have prepared in the sight of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. We don't know what Simeon's age was. He's always depicted as an elderly person. The Bible doesn't say that, but we know he said this. We don't know what his age was, but we know he communicated this. And a few verses later, he said this. He said to Mary, 
This child, meaning Jesus, is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so the words and thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. Well, Bernard knew and we know and looking back, this is a prophecy about Jesus. So the sword that ran through Mary as the mother of the Savior was the crucifixion. See, we know that. Simeon is looking from a distance. And he was by inspiration saying, here is what Jesus will do. And that made Simeon ready for heaven. It made your dad ready for heaven. He knew way more than Simeon ever knew. All of us here who are familiar with the New Testament know way more than Simeon ever knew. I was just thinking, in 97 years, how many Christmases do you celebrate? Well, probably 97 of them. So in that length of time, how many times do you celebrate the death of Christ on Good Friday? A lot. How many times do you celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ on Easter Sunday? A lot, a lot of times. Bernard probably celebrated those events a lot of times. And in between, he was in this house. And how many times did he sing Simeon's words put to music after receiving Christ's body and blood for the assurance of forgiveness of sins. Many, many times. That made him ready. It absolutely made him ready. Maybe some of you saw this up front here. So God created the farmer. It's kind of a neat little statement. It says God looked down on his newly created world and he thought, well, I need someone to take care of the land and the fields and I need someone strong enough to till the soil and plant the seeds and tend the crops. I need someone devoted enough to work 18 hour days. I bet you saw a lot of those. I need someone who will rise at dawn to milk the cows, mend the fences and do the chores. Someone to work the fields all day, fix the equipment till dark and then stays up half the night delivering a newborn calf. I bet you saw all of that and then some, and it goes on. But you get the point. Bernard Prowley was ready for heaven. He knew the best was yet to come, and yet he enjoyed this life. I was rereading your mother's funeral and, and said on that day, and say it again today, that your dad found great pride in you, Janelle, and you, Jolene, and all the grandkids, great-grandkids, and so forth that we've read about before. I mean, he enjoyed this life, and God gave a lot of blessings to him. Here and now, I think of pastorally peace. I think of the farm, the picture that you have there, the aerial photograph of the home place. And the larger version of that hung, I think, above the fireplace than the mantle in your folks' house. Now, farms don't run themselves. He's a hard worker, just like this says. But he knew, and he enjoyed, but ultimately he knew he was just passing through. Especially these last few years, he knew he was just passing through. So when pastors Olson and Bauman and I, and you would bring the gospel to him, his face would just light up. Because he knew that as good as this life was, there was something better yet to come. And that's really what Simeon is saying from a distance. Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, I've laid eyes on you 
And now I can depart in peace. And that was your dad's prayer. He could depart in peace. Pastor Olson had this thought in his message this morning. It's a great one. You talk about farmer talk. This is farmer talk. John chapter 12. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. I'm not a farmer. I have to study and reread that verse many times. Your dad, grandfather, knew exactly what that was saying. Christ is talking about himself. The hour has come when I will offer up myself. I'm going to be buried, planted in the earth, but I will rise again. And so will Easter Sunday coming up. So will everyone who knows Jesus Christ be raised up. What a great, great truth that is. Well, let's read the rest of your quote here from Luke chapter 2. So Bernard is ready for heaven because he knew Jesus Christ. Here's the rest of it. It had to be revealed to him. It had to be revealed to him. Look at the last, last part of this verse. A light for revelation to the Gentiles. It's not talking about the last book of the Bible. It means discovery. God revealing to us. A light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. So the good news of God in Christ comes from the outside in. None of us automatically knows it. Bernard didn't automatically know it. It had to be revealed to him. It was revealed to him at his baptism. And it was fanned into flame all through his life. That's revelation. That is the revelation that is being referred to here. A light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. There's an old saying that says, close to the soil is close to God. There is a mistaken notion in that saying. Hardworking though he was, it's not our occupation that saves us. It's not our sweat and toil that puts us in God's family. It's not what we do that puts us in God's family and makes us ready for heaven. Bernard probably knew that. He knew that every blessing that came his way came through the Son of God that had opened the way to heaven for him, and the best was yet to come. He knew that. The question is, how much do we know that? His peace, our peace. And we can say with Simeon, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations. A light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. Be at peace. Amen. pray. 
Almighty God, we praise you for the great company of saints who have finished their lives in faith and now rest from their labors. We especially this afternoon thank you for the blessings that you gave to Bernard Prawley. The peace that came through Jesus alone. You redeemed him, you have redeemed all of us by the blood of your son. We thank you for giving him to us as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your compassion, comfort all who are sad in this hour. We praise you for your love in Christ, which sustains us in life and death. In our earthly sorrows, help us find strength in the fellowship of the church, joy in the forgiveness of sins, and hope in the resurrection to eternal life. You do not leave us comfortless, but you strengthen and care for us through your word and sacrament. You give us family, friends, and neighbors to help when there is loneliness now and in the days to come. Brighten our future with a firm trust in your promises and care. Remove our fears and make us bold to pray with confidence as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. We'll close our service by singing hymn 382, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less.
We thank all of you for being here and for your support and your continued support in the days ahead. The committal service will immediately follow this service in the Unalaska Cemetery. You can drive over or you can walk over. If you're going to walk over, be very careful as you go through this intersection, obey the traffic light, and then walk down to the main entrance into the cemetery. We'll say the table prayer here so that when you return, we can immediately begin the luncheon. Lord Jesus, we realize that what we receive from your hand is really from your hand. You use many, farmers included, in fact, mainly in providing everything that we have in terms of our food. Help us realize that you are the source, however, of our peace, forgiveness, heaven, our nurture, everything. We find in you what Bernard found in you, life and peace. Amen. <laughs>